Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, it's a shame to have to say this, but somebody's got to do it. Not only for your own good, but also just to go on record as someone in the masses that finally said what needed to be said concerning the pervasive permeation of rampant vapidity that has saturated the human consciousness. So, you know, the old roll-up-your-sleeves, dirty-job requirement thing. The most shallow, superficial individuals with the lowest intelligence concern themselves with people and gossip. The moderately shallow, superficial ones with average intelligence concern themselves with places and events. But the truly wise, conceptually deep ones with the highest intelligence concern themselves with concepts and ideas. I say this because sometimes people ask me, Sage, how come you never do any videos about people or current events? And I have to tell you the reason is simple, because that kind of content is trite, shallow, superficial, airheaded, mediocrity that only appeals to the lowest common denominator. Which means, of course, the majority, of which I have absolutely no interest in appeasing, nor to whom the appetite of which I will not be catering to. I am here to wake people up from delusion, not to enable sleeping lemmings to get more comfortable in their delusion by serving up predictable cheesy junk food entertainment that telegraphs all its intentions so as to be more easily consumed by lazy sedentary brains that love to get banged over the head with sophomore catchy unchallenging candy coated tripe so as to mask the inner quiet desperation with some fake outward appearance of arrogant, clever self-satisfaction, which upholds a contrived self-image as being one who is among those who fit in and are accepted into some smug group that imagines itself to be just so great because it attracts so many others of the same type of which you can be sure is a whole lot of people. This is the essence of mediocrity. And it's not anything to applaud, condone, encourage, or feed into. Mediocrity is the death knell of artistry and creativity. And is an omen of bloated decadence and the rapid decay of intelligence, wisdom, philosophy, and mindfulness. We should be careful when maintaining standards of quality to not reward mediocrity, for this only gives it more motivation to repeat itself, which is what it's best at. For one of the great hallmarks of mediocrity is the constant rehash and regurgitation of anything that was previously popular. And in this regard, mediocrity knows no decency or shame. It will beat a dead horse into a pulp, and then take the pulp and make it into a smoothie. And after you throw that up, it will take the vomit and incorporate it into an energy drink. This is the degraded state of mainstream pop culture, which began its gradual degenerate descent into insipid superficiality in 1980, and has gotten regressively worse and worse upon each passing decade. Things got so lame that after 1999, we even lost creativity in clothing styles, 
They usually reflect a particular flavor of bubblegum that represents the pop culture zeitgeist of a decade, which you would think would be the bread and butter. Have you noticed that? If you look back at the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, each decade had its own unique style. But does anything really come to mind when you think about 2000 to 2009? What about 2010 to today? Anything? I can't really think of anything. Other than just a mishmash rehash of past styles. There's no more distinct style accompanying the decades anymore. Everything now is either just streamlined brand names or commercial logos. Or an x factor hipster socio-historical grab bag of random appropriation. Or just the usual formal business attire. Not that I really care all that much, but it is a demonstration of the decline of creativity via the saturation and satiation of mediocrity on the masses, which dilutes or dries up completely the wellspring of primary source content and original expression. Then you know that the mediocrity has reached epic proportions. With the reality shows the way they are nowadays, along with all the various parades of sideshow freaks and drama queens and attention whores, it's gotten so bad that they even do fake reality shows now. That's right. TV is gonna go to great lengths to indulge your need for sniffing other people's dirty underwear and providing you with a role model archetype you can identify with, so that you may properly vicariously indulge in all the attention whoring and drama pornography. Even if it means it has to stage events to appear real. Does that sound familiar? This seems to be related to a theme we find present here in this reality. This gusto for lies and fakery. Much of the time you even know it's a lie, but you'll love it anyway. We love fake people and fake personalities. Because we are not self-accepting people. We hide our pure natures behind superficial facades of luxury, plastic surgery, and extravagant lifestyles. And we keep ourselves happily sedated in this shallow fluff by consuming large amounts of prescription drugs and mainstream popular culture. And isn't it curious that the biological definition of culture is the cultivation of bacteria, tissue cells, etc. in an artificial medium containing nutrients? Artificial. Got the drift. Then so who is the most popular bacterium of the day? All the sheep want to know. Yes, sheep. As in sheeple. It's always been kind of a cool way to refer to the adherents of mediocre conformity. But I always had my own little pejorative label that I like much better than the sheeple. Which has grown into a bit of a cliché. I have always called them the ones. I call them the ones because they are the ones that all agree. And they are also called the ones because they are all like these little metaphorical number ones, uniformly basic, all running around in giant packs of identical meaning and purpose. What are all the ones watching? What are all the ones listening to? What does the latest poll by all the ones reveal? Which contestant have all the ones voted off the show? 
because you must be like all the ones. All the ones agree on this. Don't find yourself in opposition to all the ones. All the ones might pass a new law to crush your individuality. Cause you must be like all the ones. And you must be like all the ones and you must be like all the ones and you must be like all the ones and you must be like all the ones. That's fucked up. So to appeal to all the ones must mean that you are successful, right? To be celebrated by the lowest common denominator has become the measure of greatness. When all the clones love you, you know you have achieved something magnificent. You are now a popular mainstream product of pop culture mediocrity. Congratulations. Obviously, your appeal must be a reflection of good taste. Because all the ones approve of what you are doing. You are normal, non-threatening, and unchallenging to the one's sensibilities, and thereby fit for mass consumption and other such facilities. Because you know how bubblegum logic works. If it's popular, then that must mean that it's the best. That it's better than all the alternatives. That it's top shelf, creme de la creme, right? Yeah, and that's why fast food cheeseburgers are so much better than filet mignon. This is why junk food is so much better than gourmet cuisine. Are we to believe this? Come on. It's not better, it's just cheaper. Easier, flashier. It's mediocre. Which at best just means supremely average. How does something like that sound to you? You are so stupendously average. Quite ordinary. Unremarkable. Standard. Normal. Typical. Regular. Are these descriptors getting you horny yet? No. Popular doesn't mean better. It means mediocre. Which, from the perspective of the refined aesthetics of a creative discerning mind, means complete and utter artistic failure. You got that? Under most circumstances, with a few exceptions, popularity means epic fail. Artistically, popularity isn't indicative of success, but of a failure that is obscured by a sort of ironic, condescending, mocking lionization. Behind all the applause and smiling faces is the secret desire to see your downfall. This is why so many artists who were lauded and celebrated and pushed to the heights of praise and attention are promptly kicked and dragged through the dirt the second they are down. The media and the paparazzi just love that, don't they? Like buzzards and vultures circling a fresh corpse. That's why they celebrate you so hard when you're on the way up. It's fresh meat. A future meal. Another mediocre subject for them to rip apart and play in the innards. You feel bad when you see this happen to someone like Marlon Brando. But not so bad when you see it happen to anyone in this new crop of snarky millennials. Who knew or blew their way to the top. Because it was always their dream to have the lifestyle of an artist. 
You dig that? The lifestyle. Actual artistry is a glossed over afterthought. They don't have much talent, but talent doesn't matter if you have a really good looking superficial appearance. Don't worry about talent. We got teleprompters and auto tune for that. What we'll loosely call your so called body of work is really just generic filler to justify the lifestyle of a pop star, which is more important. And incidentally, the subject of a new reality TV show where the lifestyle is the feature showcase of the show. And have you seen one of these shows? They are expositions that provoke misanthropy, which is why they are best avoided, for they inspire the desire for blood sport. They make you root in favor of the media vultures and even want to assist them by sharpening their talons and feeding them cocaine. Give you some privacy, please. You got what you signed up for. So don't sneer and push through those photographers, lest you want to get thrown to the lions. Yeah. I'm in favor of bringing back the Coliseum games, wherein reality TV stars and their ilk must engage in gladiator battles to the death. Now that would be something to celebrate. And speaking of celebrating, the crypto semantics of which bring us the word celebrity, it's amazing how mediocrity, which works so little and contributes works of such little value, feels it needs to be praised and awarded on a regular basis. You know, the type of mediocrity that is so average and so propped up by nepotistic handicapped assistants that it just simply deserves to be showered by various awards granted from itself to itself. There's nothing better in the whole wide world than mediocrity patting itself on the back and bestowing itself mediocrity awards. A reward for a job well done, right? And they call this professionalism which is a real slap to the intelligence. More like professional mediocrity. But you know what a real kick to the kidneys is. If you look up the word mediocrity in the dictionary, it lists as a related synonym, amateur. And this is a common misconception and misassociation as obviously most people don't understand the meaning of the word as it's often wrongly used to indicate a meaning of one being green or unskilled or of lame creative abilities. As we have often heard it spoken in response to displays of buffoonery to knock it off and stop acting so amateur. Amateur doesn't mean unskilled. It means someone who does something out of a love for doing it. As opposed to the professional who does something out of love for profit, which automatically means it just has to be better, right? Making an amateur mistake means that you haven't been thoroughly trained on how to produce to the cookie cutter standard. You aren't formula enough. You need to become more predictable, less thoughtful and cater to someone else's standards. 
That's funny, considering so many of the styles and techniques that come naturally to the amateur are often later adopted and replicated by the so-called professionals. The amateur has heart. The professional wants money. And that's exactly why the quality of these mainstream projects have gone so low. The motive of profit almost always necessarily equates into a decline in quality and substance. And this truth pervades all arenas of human achievement. Ask yourself, what kind of doctor would you like treating you or operating on you? One that loved what he was doing or one that was just doing it because he loves a paycheck? And what kind of politician you want representing you? One that loves and serves the people? Or one that will use the office to benefit himself and his corporate pimps? Profit is a recipe that poisons the well. And with art, it's even more of a factor that will determine quality. When you are pushing out content for profit, you have basically become a pimp who is prostituting an art form, which drastically cheapens everything, despite the million dollar budget. And that's really an unfortunate shame. But it's really all quite depressing, which is why I'm done talking about it now. But, uh, yeah, it kind of had to be said, and, uh, I had to say it. It was really not really pleasant. But I, you know, had to really deconstruct it, chop it up, and slice it the other way into little cubes. Can't have that. Too much. Too much facade. It has to be chopped. You know, it's bad enough there's a facade. But a facade on steroids? No, it has to be chopped. Sorry.